Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Magnetic Circuits and Spies, a Practical Example. This is a part one of a two-part presentation. I'm going to post the second part in a while. There is a related video to this presentation. Here is the link. And the link is going to be printed also on the YouTube page of the video that you are now watching. This is a very important background for this presentation. So the issue that I'm going to cover in this presentation is how to deal with the so-called integrated magnetics. So for example, if we have a case in which we would like to build a magnetic network that will consist of a number of components, like uh, an inductor, another inductor, and a transformer. This would be typical of an LLC converter. One way is, of course, to use discrete components, like here we'll have a tightly coupled transformer, and then another in inductor in parallel, and this inductor in series. Or we can use a so-called integrated magnetics. It will be one device that actually is doing everything, both the transformer the, and the two inductors. So in this presentation, I'm going to show how to deal with this magnetic element, and in particular, how to develop a SPICE-compatible model that you can actually test the various designs, uh, the effect of the gap, the size, etc. So why is this element, this magnetic element, capable of actually exhibiting both the transformer function and the inductor's function. And the reason is that in this case, we have, first of all, at the input, we have an inductor. Here is this flux path. And we have gaps because we are going to use it for power inductor, DC inductor that we have to store energy in. But then we have also a auxiliary path here, a bypass for the flux through this middle leg, and this will actually uh, cause leakage, which is like a serious inductor. So we have, on the one hand, we have the parallel inductor, which is here, this inductor. We have the coupling between input and output, and then we have the serious inductor, which is the leakage. So in this presentation, I'm going to show how to develop a SPICE-compatible reluctance model of integrated magnetics, so to help tuning the design. But I'm not going to discuss second-order effects, which are non-linear effects like linearity of the ferrite BH curve, proximity effect, core losses, temperature, and many other things, which are not covered in this very introductory presentation. So let me start off with the very basic. Starting with Ampere's law, we know that the circular integral of HDL is the n times i, which is the MMF, magnet magnetic motive force, and I can break this integral into the two parts for this particular case of a toroid or a closed structure, okay? in which we have, this is ferrite here, and this is a gap. We have a magnetic path here, L sub F, and then we have a gap length of L sub G, and then the material permeability or relative permeability is mu sub R, and of course here we have mu sub zero, which is air or vacuum. And a cross section here is A sub E, which is the cross section area of this uh, body. So I'm breaking down this integral into the two parts, which I'm assumed to be each one homogeneous by itself, so that we have the HF, which is the magnetic field within the ferrite times the magnetic length, and then magnetic field within the gap times the length of the gap, here it is. And then replacing H by B over mu, I get this e expression, and then again, replacing B by phi over A, the flux over the area, I'm getting this equation. Now defining this part here in the reluctance here, this one and this one here, I get this equation. 
which is saying that the n times i, the MMF, is equal to the flux times the reluctance, and then flux times the reluctance, and the flux in this particular case is the same, because we have the same flux here passing through the body. And I'm, of course, uh, neglecting fringing effect and other sec secondary effect. So the reluctant definition is uh, this definition here. Now looking at this equation, it looks like a Ohm's law or Kirchhoff law. You see we have similarity here and indeed we can represent uh, this reluctance relationship as a electric circuit emulated by an electric circuit. And in this case, what we are doing, we are re representing Ni, the MMF, by a voltage in the electrical circuit the reluctance by our resistance and the flux by the current in the magnetic circuit. So here is the reluctance equivalent. We have this is the voltage representing Ni, MMF. Then we have the current which is re representing phi and the resistances are representing the reluctance. So this will be for the case of say a ferrite plus a gap. Okay, here these two reluctances are in series with the same current passing through them. So if I have a complex structure like this, I can break it down into sections, and I did it kind of in an approximate way. We can say that we have here the reluctance here, which comprises the ferrite plus the gap. So this is the ferrite and this is the gap, and this is the MMF coming from here. And then I have the second side, or the right side, which is also here, and also an MMF here for this winding. And then I have the bypass, or the middle leg here, which has also a ferrite fraction and a gap. This is the ferrite, and this is the gap. So this is really very similar. It's a one-to-one -one relationship between the physical structure and the reluctance equivalent circuit. Now it is very important to realize that although we are showing this circuit like this, which has a inductances and a transformer, but it boils down to a fundamental generic model, which is the coming out of the physics textbook, which is the coupled inductor. That is, we have two inductor with some mutual inductance in between. This is the fundamental model of which we can then derive this one. So I'm going to deal with this one because once we have all the parameters like L1, L2 and M, we can go back here. And this I've shown in the video that I've, I gave a reference to, showing that if you start with this basic model of a coupled inductor, a two inductance, this is for one to one of course the case, uh, two inductances and a mutual inductance, you can then translate it to either this, which we are talking about, okay, or this, or this, all have the same transfer function and the same impedances at the terminal. So these all are equivalent, but this is really the very basic representation. And here, in this particular video that I've uh, referenced to, I'm showing that indeed if you run a simulation of this and this and this, if they are properly scaled, of course, and these are the relationship, you get exactly the same result. Meaning that indeed, this is the basic model, and then you can derive also of equivalent network. Now, since I'm going to do simulation, I need to put some numerical values here. So I've chosen to use uh, this uh, dimension. This is five centimeter, this is five centimeter. And then I have here a gap, which has a certain length, which I'll be actually changing. And then we have the width here is one centimeter and the cross section area is one centimeter. This is just as an example that I'm going to walk with. And then this is the definition of the reluctance and the relative permeability of the ferrite is assumed to be 2000 and this is of course the vacuum 
or air permeability 1.25 10 to minus 6 Henry per meter. So here is the SPICE equivalent circuit of the model plus some calculation. I'm going to go over it in detail later on, but let's just familiarize what is going on here. This is the reluctance model and all is translated into just resistances and voltage sources. And these are actually calculations that I'm going to do on the fly, that is why the simulation is running, to get the very important information that we need, like L1, L2, and K. And of course the mutual inductance is related to K. So here it is. Let's start with this reluctance part. And again, I'm translating this body, this uh, physical structure, into this equivalent circuit. I have here the ferrite part. This is the length minus the gap. And then I have here the gap part. This is for this side. And then for the right side, I have something similar. These are voltage sources. I'm swinging 1 amp. So N times I is N just the number of turns, assuming 1 amp, the result should be equivalent in any for any uh, current, of course. And then I have here the middle or the bypass, which is here, which again has some ferrite part plus a gap part. So this is this part here. Now I'm doing some calculation. The currents here represent actually the fluxes. This is the flux here, the magnetic flux here, this is the magnetic flux here, and this is the magnetic flux here. Now the definition of an inductor, inductance, is N phi over I. The I is electrical. So I can actually do here the calculation. N is uh, of course a parameter that I have defined it. I've decided to use 50 turns. Phi is what will be coming out here during the simulation. And IE is the electrical current. As I have said, I'm running this for 1 amp. So this is 1. Then this is why this, is, this expression is here. I can do the same thing for L2, the other side. But then I have to activate this one and to uh, neutralize this one. I'll be running, though, all the simulation that follows with this being activated and this is actually shorted out but making N2 equal to zero. And then very interesting, I can actually generate the coupling coefficient because what is a coupling coefficient? It is the ratio between the flux that you get at the output divided by the flux that you generated at the input. And we got all this information here. This is phi 1 and this is phi 3. So just the ratio between this is the coupling coefficient. Very, very neat and very, very simple. Okay? Otherwise, you will have to deal with a very complex magnetic structure. And here it simplifies it very much. Now, as far as the parameters goes, this is the length times the coefficient and this coefficient here is first of all changing the dimension from centimeter to meters here and then we have mu zero mu sub r and this is the area cross section area which is the one centi centimeter square which is uh, 10 to the minus four meters square okay so this will be for the ferrite and for air we don't have the uh, relative permeability it's the same thing and then this is uh, mu r and uh, this is mu zero and these are the parameters of the gap length and the number of turns of the primary secondary put it zero as i've said so these are the lengths of the gaps and then uh, i'm just multiplying the length here by this uh, coefficient so i can uh, change parameters and run it again for different say gap length etc now in the first run i'm going to set the gap the first gap here on the left to be half a millimeter and 
Here is also half a millimeter, so actually we have a gap of one millimeter total. And then the gap of the middle leg is three millimeters, okay? So this is the first run. And here it is. I see this is the gap is three millimeters. And what I'm showing here is first of all phi one. This is the on the input side, and it's about six micro Weber. And then this is the calculated L1, which is basically this times 50, the number of turns, that, which is about 300. This is micro Henry. And then I get here the coupling coefficient. In this case, this is the 0.84. So I have about 15% of a leakage uh, in this case with the gap of three millimeters. Now, if I change the gap to one millimeter, then of course the leakage becomes larger because I'm allowing more flux to go through the middle section. And here indeed, uh, the coupling coefficient drops to 0.64, which is quite, quite low. Okay, so by adjusting the middle leg a gap, you can adjust actually the stray inductance. And by adjusting the gaps on the side, you actually adjust the inductance that you see at the input and in, at the output. And then I am running it for 10 millimeters for the central leg. And in this case, of course, because the flux now through the middle section is much lower because of the large distance of the gap, I get here something which is starting to approach one, uh, which is 0.947. Okay, so this demonstrates very nicely the information you can get. Of course, you can get other information. I'm not going to elaborate on it too much, but it is clear that this is a fantastic tool to examine a complex structure like I'm showing here. Now this circuit, which is very nice by itself, of course, is lacking something very important. And that is the interface to the electrical side. That is, what we see here is all one, only the magnetics. The electrical portion comes in here. This should be N times I, okay? And here also. So this is how the electrical is coming in, but I have no information about, say, what is the voltage of the winding, okay? So to do that, you need an interface between the electrical part and the magnetic part. Now I'm going to discuss this in a forthcoming video, which I hope to post uh, sh shortly, in which I'll show different ways to realize this interface, which turns out to be not too complex. So by this, you have actually a circuit that can be uh, connected to an electrical circuit. For example, uh, you can put it into a LLC converter uh, circuit, simulation of an LLC, and these will be then the uh, terminals to connect the magnetic circuit to the electrical circuit. So this will be explained in a forthcoming video. So this brings it to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. Watch for part two in which I'll be discussing the interface. Thank you very much.